uschoo.com. This is the USCHO Spotlight, a weekly podcast from U.S. College Hockey Online at uschoo.com, featuring conversations with college hockey coaches and players and journalists who cover the sport. Welcome to USCHO Spotlight for Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. I'm Ed Trefsker alongside Jim Connolly. One of the teams that has been really hot of late is the Yukon Huskies. And joining us now on USCHO Spotlight, the head coach of the Yukon Huskies, Mike Cavanaugh. Mike, uh, your team is playing really good hockey right now. 6-2-1 and one in your last nine games after a 1-4-1 and one start. Uh, first off, welcome, but uh, what's going right for the Huskies these days? No, well, thanks guys for having me. Uh, I just think, uh, you know, we've been, we had been playing pretty even well before this last stretch. Uh, I thought early on in the year, you know, with the exception of maybe our first weekend, uh, we had played pretty well. Like even a game we lost to at UMass, I think we lost it five, two or six, two, five on five. We played great. We just, our special teams were, uh, not very good. And I think, What's really helped is if you look at our special teams since Christmas, they've gotten a heck of a lot better. You know, we went from at Christmas time, I think we were a minus six in special teams and, and right now we're plus one. So it's been a stretch of being plus seven in our last nine games and we all know how important those are. So, but overall five on five, I've been pretty happy with the way we've played as a club. Uh, and now our special teams are getting a little bit better. You and I talked a few weeks ago, you know, and really kind of focused on your your junior class. And you go back to this weekend, obviously, uh, your goaltender, Thomas Vomachka, has had a great season for you. He's a junior. But then uh, Carter Turnbull scores two uh, on Friday. Johnny Evans scores four on Saturday. All members of your junior class. And I look at your top three scores, all juniors. What does this class uh, mean to the program? Oh, I think they've been... Uh you know, it was a big class for us. They replaced the first class we ever recruited. And, you know, when you when you take a, a new job, usually that first class you recruit's a big class. And that was a big class for us. It was Derek Pratt and Spencer Nas and Johnny Austin, a bunch of guys on that in that class. So we graduated probably seven or eight. And then, you know, Latunov and Sona Sleeve Pro. So we brought in, you know, Johnny and Carter and Yakum and Kale and you know it's it's a big big group we have in that class uh, Roman Canal uh, and now you see and as they as they mature and you know they feel very comfortable at the school their surroundings or know what my expectations are I think you're seeing them play their very best hockey so you know between Yakum Kale Johnny Carter they all had big weekends this weekend and they're starting to carry our team. How much do you feel that you're also getting some just general leadership, you know, good locker room leadership from from some of those guys as well? Well, we're getting great leadership from those guys, but we're also our, our three senior captains have been fantastic. So when you couple that talented junior class with what I think is, you know, as talented a, a senior class as far as leadership is concerned, that's a great combination to have. Uh, so, you know, and they're all playing important roles for us. I think one of the things that's been a strength of our team is that, you know, our top four penalty killers necessarily aren't power play guys. So, you know, we have a lot of depth throughout our lineup and throughout a game. I think, it, you know, it's been tough. I've had teams where, you know, you you bet your power play guys are also your top four penalty killers. And then that gets hard when it becomes a lot of special teams in a game. So we're getting a lot of length in our lineup with our players. And uh, as I said, you know, a very talented uh, senior group, as far as leadership is concerned, uh, coupled with a lot of talent in the junior class uh, on the ice is a great combination. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Tomas Vomarska, your goaltender. I mentioned him off the top. Uh, he had a nice freshman season, splitting some time. Then last year, uh, really had to take over the bulk of the games. Numbers maybe not as strong. He's getting back toward those freshman year numbers and you know really carrying all of the water for your team. What do you like about his progression as, as a player over the three years? I think 
what he's learned to do, Jim, is to become more efficient as a goaltender. I think he's always been uh, athletic, and he relied on his athleticism to make a lot of saves and to be his bread and butter. And unfortunately, you know, you can do that, but you get yourself out of position quite a bit. I think now he's learning to be more efficient and he smothers more pucks. So where he's controlling rebounds. So the combination of being able to control rebounds and and let pucks hit you in the midsection and not have a second shot. Also being more efficient and, you know, being more in control as a goaltender has really enabled him to be more consistent night in and night out. We're talking with Mike Cavanaugh, head coach at UConn. Two of your players, uh, Vladislav Firstov and Jan Kuznetsov, got to play in the World Juniors. It's pretty rare for the Russians to have players on their team from the NCAA ranks. How was it for you as a coach to see your guys uh, in that tournament? And was there anything that uh, they brought back from that? Yeah, I think it was fantastic. Um, I mean, that's a global hockey tournament. You know, I mean, if, if you're a hockey fan, no matter where you are, you're glued to the World Juniors. I mean, how many NHL players tweet about the, you know, the World Junior Tournament? So it's something that you're playing on such a big stage that uh, it can only help you, I think, as a hockey player. And, you know, we we, we missed those guys for seven games. Uh, so it's certainly nice having them back. Uh, the integral parts of our team and, you know, for, for UConn to be represented in the tournament, you know, those are the, f- I think the four, fifth, five players now we've had in the last, I think five or six years playing that tournament. And before we didn't have any. So it's, I think it's shown just how far the program's come in the last five or six years. Everybody's been affected in, in routines by COVID-19 protocols and so forth. That's also meant for UConn playing home games back on campus, uh, not that you could have fans anyway. Uh, how has COVID changed things game day uh, and weekly routines for your team? Yeah, you know, that's interesting. The one positive that's come out of it is such the afternoon games. I think it's been, for the student athlete, I think it's been fantastic. You know, like this weekend we played two, three o'clock games. And to be able to be home, you know, in, in your own room or in your house at eight o'clock after playing a road game, uh, for the student athlete, I think it's fantastic. They can get a really proper night's sleep uh, and be ready to go the next day. So from that standpoint, I think it's been great for our guys to be able to play on campus. Uh, now we have a, you know, the, the venue that we play in downtown is fantastic, but there's also something to be said for being able to walk across campus from your dorm room and, and go to the game. Uh, so, and not have to get on a bus for going to the game. So, I think there's been a lot of positives uh, that have come out of this. One thing that has been very different over the last three weeks or so is not being sure what your schedule is going to be from week to week. How does that affect your preparation and and pre-scouting your other opponents? You know, uh, it certainly does affect it a little bit, but, you know, when you've been in this, when you've been in the league for a long time, you have a pretty good feel for how every team plays. There's not, a lot of uh, you know, teams don't vary so much from year to year. Some players do, and personnel might, but a style that a team has usually uh, is pretty consistent from year to year. So that's not as much of an issue. Uh, I think it's also allows you to focus more on yourself as a team. You know, which is probably better off if you just focus on what makes you good as a team and keep working on that to be the very best version of yourself, it's it's probably a better than spending hours trying to, you know, scout your opponent and pick up little nuances that they might have, on, uh, you know, and try to coach to those as opposed to working on what makes you very good. When we look at uh, the UConn program uh, now firmly established in hockey East, uh, I was thinking about uh, back in the Atlantic hockey days when I was in that, building a number of times uh, back uh, under uh, the late Bruce Marshall. Uh, You've made some great strides. You look at a team that's got a number of NHL draft picks. Uh, But I I would imagine that uh, for every coach, there's still places you want to take the program. Where do you want to see the Huskies go over the next couple of years or the next few years? Yeah, well, I don't think our goals for the program 
changed since day one. Uh, maybe uh, to some people it become more realistic, uh, but we've always wanted to compete for trophies in this league. That's when we made the decision to go to Hockey East, and when I made the decision to come to UConn, I said we're gonna. Our goal is to compete for trophies, and uh, you know the next step we have to make is is being a factor in the playoffs. So uh, we need to be able to, you know, win games in the playoffs and be able to play for a league championship. I think, you know, that's the obvious next step for us. And probably, you know, that's anybody who's a competitor in hockey East, that's their goal. And uh, that's certainly no different here for us at UConn. More with Mike Cavanaugh in a moment. This is the USCHO Spotlight, a weekly podcast from U.S. College Hockey Online. We're joined here by Mike Cavanaugh from UConn. And Mike, I, I look at your team, and we mentioned the start, 1-4-1 one, and one. now. Uh, you're up to 7-6-2 and two overall. And, and when you look at percentage of points, that's going to be a big part, I think, in figuring out the standings. You're right there. A couple more wins. You could be in a, a top four, top three team, uh, you know, possibly one of the best finishes you've had uh, in Hockey East. Um, I know when you when you kind of st- set out every year, and you Ed just mentioned goals, but how do you kind of put the goal to where you want your team to finish? Is that a goal you kind of have in the back of your head? Do you ever articulate it to your team of let's try to aim for third, second, first, whatever it may be? Uh, never, actually. I, I, like our goal is to just keep getting better. Uh, and, you know, when from that first year in Hockey East, that first class that I alluded to that we recruited that played in Hockey East, Every year we got better and to the point where, you know, we finished fifth their senior year and uh, had a bye, you know, in the first round. And we played BU, who finished fourth in the quarterfinals and had a great series with them. We lost a game in overtime and we lost a one goal game uh, to the team that eventually won it. So uh, I thought we had made great progress, you know, and then that next year, you know, you have a very young group and we made progress as the season went on. I think we won five of our last eight games that year. And then last year, you know, it came down to, uh, you were probably at the game, Jim, I think against Lowell, you know, if we beat Lowell in that last game, we're looking at home ice in the playoffs, you know? Uh, so I just want to keep getting better every year, Jim. And, uh, as a program and keep developing players. So, I'm not necessarily focused on where we are in the standings as opposed to are we getting better as a team? Are, are we, you know, growing as a group? Are we developing young men? And if we continue to do that, I think your place in the standings will take care of itself. I have seen, you know, Ed mentioned you're back at Freitas, but I've seen the XL Center uh, when you've had some pretty darn good crowds in there. And, you know, I think of some of the good Friday night crowds that, uh, you you would put in here you are having a nice season and, and you're doing it without the fans how have you tried to stay engaged with your fan base and in communicating with them hey we're doing we're having a pretty good season i know you can't see it in person but don't forget we're having a really good season right now well you know one of the things the benefits i think of COVID is that we're streaming all these games live and i think you'd be surprised at how many people are actually watching them I get uh, a lot of messages, whether it's, you know, through email or through text, uh, that people that have actually watched the game. Uh, and sometimes these afternoon games make it a lot easier for, for people to watch the game. Uh, so uh, I think that's, a, you know, we're going to look back on this and say, what were the positives and benefits of COVID? And I think being able to stream all our games has been a real positive. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems that this league has taken a big step forward with streaming. Uh, Mike, I know you don't even know your opponent for the upcoming weekend yet. You'll probably find that out over the next 24 hours. Uh, but what, what what are you working on this week? What's the areas you still feel like your team can get better? Oh, I still think we can get better on special teams, you know. Um, you know, we gave up two power play goals to uh, Merrimack on on Saturday, and, and one was just a – you know, blown assignment by one of our guys. And then another one, you know, was four on three where I thought they were, they just, they they made a good play four on three. But uh, I think special teams is an area where we can get better. Face-offs is an area where we continue to get better. 
I think uh, our transition game is, is an area where we can continue to get better. So it's certainly uh, – th- there's enough for us to work on this week in practice, Jim. I'll tell you that. Uh, well, it's a pretty hot UConn Huskies team that will be hitting the ice at some point over the next uh, – five, six days, and we wish you luck. If you're a fan out there, collegesportslive.com. You can watch every one of UConn's hockey games on there as as well as the rest of Hockey East. And this is a pretty fun, exciting team to watch. So, Mike Kavanaugh, always a pleasure to talk to you, and thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks, Jim. I appreciate it, guys. Have a good day. That's UConn's Mike Kavanaugh. Jim, I always enjoy talking to Mike Cavanaugh because he's very frank and to the point. And one thing I took away from this that I think is a a good way of looking at things is what kind of positives can we take away from uh, this whole COVID thing? What kind of new things have we done that we should keep even when we can get back to uh, a more normal situation? Yeah, you know, one thing I really enjoy about Mike Cavanaugh is his perspective, you know, he has been around this game for a long time, uh, you know, uh, uh, an assistant coach and associate head coach under uh, the, the most successful coach in the game, Jerry York, for more than two decades. And then he went to UConn and, and had the chance to, you know, really take that program as it was heading to Hockey East. A perfect timing uh, to get a guy who had some really good roots within the league and, and build it. You know, not to say that Atlantic Hockey, you know, wasn't competitive. We we know that that's a very competitive league as well. But taking it was a big step forward for UConn to go into Hockey East. And they got a guy who didn't under, just understand the league, but he has really good perspective. And he uses that to kind of form a lot of his decision making. He, 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 he just really seems to to have a good grip on what it takes to be. Uh, a head coach and a leader and what it, what the players, the, the makeup of a team needs to be to be successful. And he's, you know, he's really watched this, this program kind of go through two cycles here, you know, the, in, he referenced it, their first recruiting class. And then after that class was gone, now they're really on a, a second cycle of players. And we're seeing a lot of success as this cycle continues to build and they continue to get momentum within hockey East. With the string of wins that they've been on, they are moving up the standings in Hockey East. Going to be a different playoff format, everybody in and single elimination. But it seems like the Huskies are positioning themselves well for success in the playoffs when they come in Hockey East. Yeah, I guess the single elimination isn't totally firm yet, but that does seem like the direction that they want to go as a league. Um, and, And, you know, it really that puts it into a place where anybody can beat anybody on a given night. And, you know, you, you would hear Mike Kavanaugh say something like that, that they know that they can beat anybody, but anybody can beat them. So, you know, I think he's really wants to focus on position, but I think what he really as a coach would want to focus on the most is making sure his team is playing their best hockey as they head toward March. Um, They have this, they've been a program that's been quite fortunate. They've, uh, done a good job with managing COVID and making sure that their players are eligible and able to play. Uh, they've got, you know, I, I believe the second most games in the league played behind UMass. And, uh, you know, that's a good thing for this program. They're, they're taking, uh, you know, th- this uh, this season very seriously and making sure that they're getting out on the ice. It's not always easy. And it's not something that even when you do the bet, do your best that you can control. But they seem to have controlled what's going on with COVID so that they can focus on hockey. And hockey right now, it's doing very well for this program. For Jim Connolly, I'm Ed Trepsker, and we'll catch you next time. This has been the USCHO Spotlight, a production of U.S. College Hockey Online. Visit uscho.com slash podcasts to listen or subscribe. 